Finding the perfect developer isn't easy, but at Upwork, we found her. She's in Prague, between the ideal cup of coffee and a truly impressive synthesizer collection. And you can find her right now on Upwork.com. When the world is your workforce, finding the perfect project manager, designer, developer, or whomever you may need tends to fall right into place. Find top-rated talent who can start today on Upwork.com. Sell your home with ease and save thousands in commissions using a top local real estate agent from My Ideal Agent. We research and personally interview thousands of agents to only work with the very best in your market. Ideal Agent negotiates a commission as low as 2%, saving you tens of thousands of dollars. Our agents know how to navigate today's complex market to get you top dollar. Ideal Agent delivers a seamless selling experience from start to finish. Our service is free and available nationwide. Get started today. Call 1-800-795-5529 or visit idealagent.com. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to the China Shop. You made it. We're two bulls. I'm shopkeeper Dan. With me, as always, is Kyle, creator of FinancialNeptitude.com. Kyle, how's your week been going, buddy? Ah, it's been going pretty good. Just got back home yesterday, enjoying some some time with the family. Yeah, I noticed uh, when you go out of town, you get you get back in time to go to work. Is that is oh. that a dig at me? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that won't be the case uh, next month. Uh, definitely, we'll be missing. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, well, we're glad to have you back. I know everybody missed you on the Discord voice channel. Uh, they wouldn't have missed me, though, if they got Flary or somebody filling in today. I bet you that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I don't do as good a job as the, all I do is color commentary. I'm not, I'm not as hot at predicting what the market's going to do. But anyway. Oh, uh, neither am I. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> get into the shop with us today. Sit back, relax, rage against the hedge machine. We'd love to welcome any new listeners just joining us. We're here smashing our way through a complete set of fine china, sharing those ever-growing strategies for maximizing gains, cutting losses. And if you are new to the shop and stock trading in general, check out our knowledge and resource centers on financialneptitude.com or give one of our many beginning trading episodes a listen. We'll have all those links in the episode description, but the best place to be is that aforementioned Discord server. We get on there just about every day. Really just an awesome place to be. Totally free. There aren't any paid tiers or special access areas. So if you need to see our feet pics, they're up there. You don't have to pay to see them. <laughs> I, I'm not DMing them, though, to you if you ask for more. <laughs> And I do keep asking, and he is not forthcoming. I didn't even think about that. Was that one of Flary's fake accounts? No. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to set up. Oh, son of a bitch. Did I get trolled? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> and again, why doesn't anybody want to see my feet? Damn it. I just have the ugliest feet. Anyway. I, th- I thought all feet were ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just mutated hands. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so... Kyle, when, when they do join that Discord server, uh, what what should they do if they want some swag? All they got to do is just uh, DM me with the mailing address and their choice of shot glass, uh, uh, some sticker sets, or what's the other one we got? Beer koozies. Beer koozies. Yeah. Straight from the shop. DM me your mailing address with one of the choice of one of those three, and we'll definitely get you something sent on your way as a big thank you for joining our community. Absolutely. And this is, you know, if you want to know how much money you're saving, you can check out the actual shop. We are selling this swag. It is for sale. We got that link in the episode description as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It has a dollar value. We're just giving it away, which is crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> crazy bulls. We're just giving swag away. Sign up now. Woo! Me, I'm over. All, All right. right. Any, anyhow, we just have a lot of. A lot of fun. We're glad everybody's here. Thanks for making it. And uh, thanks for being here. We love you all so much. Hey, Kyle, we got any show news going on? Uh, yeah. So uh, next week, our interview with Sammy Ellard King, founder of Up the Gain, should be coming out. Uh, working to confirm with Joe Sakala for after that to see if that recording is still on. Mm. Just need to make sure that he's had his, his big news announcement uh, 
didn't see anything on their site yet, so that may be getting pushed back just a little bit. Okay. But we do have uh, Stacking Benjamin's co-host, Joe Salce, online uh, either way. So one of those two episodes will get released next week. All right. After that, we'll be talking to CC Legatter, then Phil Muscatello, uh, and then uh, I'm not sure who the next one is. <laughs> anyway. And many more. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. But. Until then, we have got an ill-informed, illogical, illegal episode for you today. <laughs> I don't know what makes it illegal other than the alliteration. Right. <laughs> Plenty of market moving news, stocks on the radar, and more options than potholes on a county road. And there's so many in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. And Tucson. Who's got the worst roads? That's what I want to know. I've driven on a lot of them, and Illinois and Arkansas are my two picks. You know, there was a there was a report on who had the worst roads, but I don't remember what it was. I feel like we should just ask the listeners. Send us a message. Tell us how bad your roads are. <laughs> Who's got the worst roads in the country? Let us know. And I mean, what a great segue, because we do love it when you reach out to us. Uh, we love all those messages and comments on Twitter and Facebook and Discord, whether they're about shitty roads or, or whatever your heart <laughs> desires. If you're old school, you can send us an email to the number two bulls at financialneptitude.com. Or you can give us a phone call, 725-22-BULLS. That's 725-222-8557. Maybe you got a hot stock tip. Maybe you want to tell us about a great trade you just made. Or maybe you're trying to start a war with Gilder just to unite your country. But a black-clad bastard keeps foiling your plans. That son of a bitch. Inconceivable. <laughs> What do you mean my six-fingered swordsman got cut? That bastard. <laughs> He's my best man. The best man. <laughs> oh, I love watching oh. him work. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Good <laughs> stuff. You think that sixth finger gives him an advantage in sword fighting? I don't know about sword fighting, but probably in the sack. <laughs> <Ayo>! <laughs> oh, I've never six-fingered a man before, but uh, <laughs> this sounds pretty fun. All right. <laughs> Maybe we should move on before this goes really off the rails. All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's go over those bet results. All right. Well, if you remember, we had a special guest making our pick for this new mm -hmm. format of us versus random. Mm -hmm. uh, Flary wanted to go short, go, 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 or just go, go, actually. I, now I got the song stuck in my head. <laughs> With me. Yeah. <laughs> So mm -hmm. GoGo uh, opened the week below our entry point at 1753, but it did fill just shortly before the close on Monday. Our second ad, I believe, was on Thursday at 1857, and the dump finally happened on Friday, and GoGo managed to close at Ooh. 1751. I was sweating it this morning, the Friday morning. I was, oh God. I was like, it's done. I'm not even going to watch it. Blech. Oh, so <laughs> that, that brings our total for the month up to 509.64. Random had C Dev, which had mm -hmm. earnings uh, during that week. They posted some spectacular earnings. <laughs> I was watching that. I was like, oh shit, this is not going to be good. But uh, uh, C Dev did, uh, it opened at 645. It never really saw that boost from those strong earnings. And uh, I think it just kind of closed. Closed at 647, so Random only made about two pennies on that whole trade. So Random finishes the first week at 501.55. Wait, so we, with Flurry's pick, we, we beat Random? We are in the lead. I mean, still oh, got shit. three weeks to go, but. All right, all right, get, let's get Flurry in here. Let's get, we need yeah. to do a po post game interview. Let's get him in. But let's go down to the winner's circle then. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the winner's circle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the final countdown. Was that the final countdown, or were you doing some some Rocky theme? That's what I don't know. It was like Rocky final countdown mix. Either way, fuck random. We took him down. You were a big underdog coming into this week. How did you stay focused and pull out the win? Well, you know, it's confidence in your levels and your area of interest. You know, big big earnings. Uh, you know, random was, <laughs> was, was making me sweat it for a little bit. And then into the close, it was kind of a nail biter, but you know, the scale. And then, you know, I gotta, I gotta say, I learned one lesson last week and that's, you just can't have too tight of a stop. You know, I know a guy, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a guy. 
<laughs> you, know, you know somebody. <laughs> Tell us, were you, were you sweating when uh, it looked like pre-market or, or end of the open today this morning when the stocks sp- uh, oh, spiked up to over $19? Like <laughs> <laughs> what was going yeah, through I, your mind? Uh, I had a, I had an emergency level up there. That's also why we went with the no stop route. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> was, was more nervous when I, when I opened up CDEV and it was up 6%. <laughs> Oh man, that was uh, it was a serendipitous end of the week there as uh, GoGo just shoots up, picks up the second uh, second uh, scale and <laughs> squeezes me to death, and then just dumps. That was beautiful. <laughs> so it's good to get the win for uh, Team Two Bulls. Uh, happy to bring it home. Was there ever a moment you felt like uh, things were things were not going to go your way? Uh, yeah, no, it was uh, it was looking pretty pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was excited, you know, the range of emotions when they gap down and I was like, oh, fuck random. Look at that gap down. Terrible play. And then you're like, actually, that's bad for you. They get a better fill. And I was like, oh, man, I guess I didn't think about it that way. I was just thinking they got like the market like that was their price from last week. But yeah, so the gap down hurt me mm-hmm. uh, on CDEV. So they got a beautiful entry based upon that gap down. And then they, they had a little little fade off. Uh, the last few days, bad earnings. So that was nice. And then they had, uh, a, they <laughs> had a strong close, today. and they they made it a game uh, late into the day uh, on Friday. But uh, a good job, uh, holding strong, getting the win for the team. Thank you. Uh, any any advice for for the rest of the the shop here going forward? Uh, go short if if uh, <laughs> random's always going long. Go short. Just uh, short should random. Your <laughs> oh man, I was I was jokingly saying you should just wait until like the uh, Zach Morris uh, FinTwit calls on uh, on Twitter uh, do their pump, and then you know you can you can just short those. Especially since you know you don't actually have to be able to find locates and all that stuff. Like just uh, <laughs> so just go short uh go short whatever he's got going on this week i think it was like uh moho supposed to go to a dollar so i'm sure it'll go to 10 cents or something like that yeah oh god <laughs> <laughs> seems pretty good where that hkd what the heck was going on with that holy cow hkd what is that i don't know some some <laughs> microchip something it went up uh, it went from twelve dollars to twenty five hundred dollars in in a week or something like that and it so it was trading twenty five hundred and now it's trading seven twenty in in less than a day it's, oh. a, it's a glorious <laughs> chart if you haven't taken a look holy <laughs> go take, wow go take a look wow. at that one. Yeah. What is it again? HKD. Wow. HKD. Yeah, that's the big boy short and the uh, don't get don't get caught off sides on that one. Tuesday, oh. yeah, they got over twenty five hundred. They ended the week five thirteen. Wow. You could probably oh. just short that, and you're going to be fine too. Although, <laughs> yeah. but look at the volume. The volume is so bad on this down drop. <laughs> yeah, it's like, an ex- it's like such a it's such a low flow too. It's so funny. Oh my <laughs> what could go wrong if you're going to do anything? You know, you should probably go short that uh, with no stop and <laughs> see if you can get squeezed for like a thousand. <laughs> well, uh, I know, I know what my bet pick is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Well, thanks for the advice, Larry. You got anything, uh, anything for the listeners uh, for for next week? No, and just uh, again, thanks for having me on last week. It was fun. Uh, it was fun sweating this bed. It was fun watching you guys uh, do the consequences. And I was, I was just joking with my wife. I said, "Man, they, they go go better hold this this because <laughs> whatever these guys have cooking for me, I'm sure it's not going to be good." So. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a relief when that bell rang. Uh, so, anyways, I, I appreciate it, guys, as always, and mm. uh, you know, look forward to the next time. <laughs> Thanks, Flair. Thanks Fantastic. for jumping in. All right, Thank later, you guys. so much. You take Congrats care. Congrats on your win. Thanks. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was that was great. That's great having Flurry in here. Thank you, Flurry. Thank you for filling in. Uh, he'll be back again sometime, I'm sure. Yeah, whenever we need a pick. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Let's uh, let's talk about some news. All right. Dow drops deep on moving inflation, COVID frustration, war damnation. We're just bringing you the fucking news. You gotta recognize the game if you don't wanna lose. We're just skitty two bulls trading information. Yeah, we are. Rioters raiding, oh. insider trading, taxes mm. are raising, bills mm-hmm. on the hill. We got a crypto mill. No, they ain't growing weed. When the Fed speaks today, it's some shit we don't need. Sing it, man. Two bulls trading information. 
information. What? To pull straight in information. I'm inclined to agree. To pull straight in information. That is accurate. Very accurate. What is All right. Well, what should we start with? Should I with the jobs report? Yes. Let's start with that job report. Uh, the jobs report was really fucking strong. But we're in a recession. Oh, wait. No, we're not in a recession. Sorry. Apologies. White House. Apologies. Wow. Yes. The White House, they say we're not. If you ask anyone else, I think they say we are. <laughs> uh, so the the stock uh, market uh, kind of did re- it reacted in a surprising way. You would expect a strong jobs report to, to lead to the markets, you know, continuing on their upward momentum. But I think in this case, the strong jobs report meant that uh, the Fed is going to have to continue to aggressively raise hikes. So it looked like what we were seeing after that report came out was uh, uh, fears of another 75 BIP rate coming out in the September meeting. Uh, I think the percentage of the expected increase, I think before it was a 40% chance, now it's a 60% chance. But the crazy thing is, even, even with that, it still closed pretty strong. I mean, we we're still down from yesterday's close, but not by much. Uh, we closed at forty one forty one on the the ES uh, futures market. Yeah, it's 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 a conundrum, right? I I definitely spent most of the Friday morning trying to look for short opportunities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that pesky spy in the news. I don't want to get too much into the stock charts. No, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, we got to be watching then to see if. Uh, uh, Going forward, the 75 BIP, if they make any statements on to, to what their, their plans are for this next September meeting. Yeah. I don't know, how do you interpret it? I mean, if the jobs numbers were really bad, was it going to change uh, the, how, how the Fed was going to do interest rates? Was it really going to be going to affect them? I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think that if they were to see like a surprise miss, that maybe that means that whatever the policy changes that they've been doing are having the effect that they intended as I think, aren't they trying to slow hiring? Like, isn't that the whole basis for, for the, the tighter monetary policy? I thought it had everything to do with inflation. Yeah. And I thought this is one of the indicators they're watching to track their effects. Sounds like the fed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The jobs market will definitely tell us if inflation is going up or down. Right. I, I honestly, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think it would have made a difference. I, you know, bad jobs, numbers, right. good jobs, numbers, they're, they're, they've got to raise those interest rates. They've been so low for so long anyway. It just make, doesn't make sense to me to have uh, these interest rates be so low. I, I, when I bought my house in, uh, what was that, 2003 or four, mm-hmm. 3% was a really good interest rate. 3%? Yeah, that was really good. Most people were getting four and five, six on their mortgage. I, yeah, I think my first was around five and a quarter. That was around 2009. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now we're sitting at... Uh, 4.99% was the last report I saw, but that's a little bit misleading, as we said in that uh, in the trading information episode yesterday. Yeah. Like the actual rate seems to be somewhere around like six, six and a half percent. Right. So, so I feel like we're, we're just now getting back to what, I don't know, maybe because it's just burned in my head because it's when I bought that house. Uh, like, oh, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. The low rates seemed like it was just abnormal and I couldn't imagine that continuing forever. No, 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 no. No, it's bad enough to try and buy a house with inflation. Right. That house was 200 grand last year. <laughs> now it's 400 grand. What happened? <laughs> oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, saying it does, does feel like there's another housing bubble on its way. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what stories? Sell your houses now, kids. <laughs> Not advice. <laughs> what stories you got? So I guess I guess there there was a bill passed in the Senate for the, the Biden agenda. Hmm. Um, I'm looking for the, the 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 climate and tax bill. I don't think they've given it a clever name, have they? Climate and tax the clit bill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it included a one percent tax on share buybacks. Hmm. Oh. So why to increase revenue? <laughs> no, but what was there? Originally, they wanted to reduce tax breaks on hedge fund profits. Mm-hmm. And private equity firms, but uh, a certain Arizona senator, Cinema, did not like that. So she fought to change it to a one percent excise tax on stock buybacks. I feel like the the tax and are doing stuff with the hedge funds is less 
about taxing everybody than a, a tax on buybacks. Like buybacks are the things like that's the stuff that you and I can participate in. If we own a stock yeah. and the company does a buyback, that brings the money yeah. back to me. I can't do anything with a hedge fund or private equity firm because I'm not an accredited investor. I wonder who persuaded her to get rid of. Right. <laughs> to do that, Kyle. <laughs> Gee. Huh. Yeah. Huh. I, I bet, you know what? I bet she sat down with her friends and said, I've got a real conundrum. I just personally love hedge fund profits. I love private equity firms and they're getting a bad deal. I'd rather push it on to everybody. Uh, right. It's not all doom and gloom, though. Analysts are saying that uh, companies, instead of doing buybacks, may just increase spending on dividends. Okay. So if, you, you know, for, for traders like us, that's not that's not terrible. No, I'll take I, I'll take a dividend and reinvest it. That sounds yeah. good to me. Which in if, if 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 people are reinvesting their dividends, it's not the the company buying the stock back, but it's definitely more buyers with that same money. Right. So we can only speculate. I th- I do think it's a follow the money, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it happened. It it's happening. Definitely sounds like yeah. Uh, I, I'm guessing the hedge fund and private equity lobbyists were, were doing something to get that off of that bill. No, 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 no. Don't get rid of our tax loophole. Uh, buybacks last year in 2021 hit a record of $882 billion. Oof. $882 billion of stock buybacks in 2021. And the estimate for this year is close to a trillion. Wow. So, I mean, 1%. On a, on a trillion dollars is ten billion dollars, which I mean, if you put it, if you put that in terms of like you know what we spend on the military, it's not that much money, right? Oh, cinema, you should have done ten percent. What's your deal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess they they're they're expecting it'll it'll generate around fourteen billion dollars of tax uh, revenues. It's crazy that there's that much in buybacks in a time when you think that everyone should be tightening their budgets because. We're supposedly going into a recession, right? There was another. There was another article on Business Insider that was saying like even Trump wanted these hedge fund loop, loopholes closed and was trying to get it done. Right. You know, you had people <laughs> on both sides of the aisle were like, "Okay, we can close this tax loophole, but not cinema." Not, no, I'm, we're getting more and more political the longer we do this show. God. I know. Right? <laughs> as long as we're bashing everybody, it's okay. In my book. that's how I tell myself. As long as everybody gets criticized equally, <laughs> we're doing our job. All right, what what uh what else you got? Uh, I don't remember. Let me check my notes here. Oh, uh, a follow up to the Great Resignation. Oh, uh, there's a, a, a article here from MSN saying that uh, the the Great Resignation is turning into the Great Regret. <laughs> oh, and not just by the employees that have uh, resigned and taken uh, uh, positions with other companies, but the companies that have been hiring them have been regretting it as well. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a there's a survey of 2,500 workers from the Muse. That's a job search site. Found that about three quarters uh, or 72 percent experienced either surprise or regret that the new position or new company they quit turned out to be very different from what they were led to believe. The company they quit their job for oh turned out to be very different from what they were led to believe. And nearly half of them, about 48 percent of these people, said that they would they would try to get their old jobs back. Wow. Yeah. Another poll by USA Today found that just 26% of job switchers like their new job enough to stay. Huh. Wow. Right. Uh, well, and then Kyle, was, uh, you left your job. Did you want to go back? Not really. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> uh, but then they also talked about the firms or the companies are doing the, the employers regretting their decisions as well. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have hired that guy. <laughs> Walmart's. <laughs> Walmart's May earnings call, the CEO said the company's weeks of overstaffing cut into profits. <laughs> I guess they had previously hired an influx of new employees in 21 to cover COVID-19 staff shortages, and they're not the only ones. So there's a lot of companies across the industries that are making cuts after trying to bulk up their, their labor force. Well, you know, if you are a company it, it, overstaffed, it's easier to to trim down to your core of, of the best workers, right? Yeah, but it's real shitty to do because you just made somebody upend and leave a position where they probably had some like, you know, better benefits just because of the longevity there. You're going to hire them for a year and then turn around and cut them because you fucked up. I'm like, ah, that's just shitty practices. 
Are are you saying that the American worker doesn't get a fair shake? I'm saying that the way <laughs> that the labor works these days, uh, since they yeah. got rid of pensions, that yep. there is no loyalty to anyone anymore. Yeah, and companies that try to trick you into thinking that uh, they're full of shit. I, yeah, I, I, re- I really feel like the worker of today, and one of the reasons the Great Resignation was possible is people understand that. They understand yes. it's all talk. There's really part no of, loyalty. Most companies. The problem, a lot of these companies that used to offer like pensions, like I've seen it in a few different places where they had a pension, but then they stopped. Like they, mm-hmm. they didn't change their philosophy to treat their employees any different. You can make somebody put up with a lot of shit when you're threatening to take away or when they have the the prospect of you know uh, income for the rest of their life if they put in their 20 or 30 years right when you take that mo- or incentive away from them they're not going to put up with your shit anymore now they're going to go to their mercenaries the average worker today is a mercenary and he's yep. going to go to the highest bidder yeah all right what else you got real quick i got a nice feel good story i know we we do a lot of stories that don't feel so good Oh, wait. No, it's another one of those. Uh, Equifax Credit Report (laughs) Agency (laughs) has apparently been misquoting credit scores and then changing it about 25 points in either direction for for about a month back in uh, mid-March to April. Uh Uh-huh. Millions of incorrect credit scores were sent out. 25 points can make a big difference depending on where your credit is setting to. Yes. Oh, indeed. A Florida woman like if- uh, was who ended up being forced to, into a pricier car loan uh, is is suing and they're trying to get a class action. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Kyle, I'm wondering why we as consumers don't get to report our experience with credit agencies and maybe give credit agencies a credit score. Right? Be like, oh, Equifax, we can't look you up. It looks like your credit reporting score is a little low this month. <sighs> Got to get that back up there, buddy. The worst part is with a lot of these, like there's nobody you can even talk to to get anything fixed. Like it can take a long time to get a, a fuck up, for, you know, fixed on these goddamn things. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which one of these companies it was. My wife was trying to get something something taken care of with them for for her work and she spent weeks trying to get all trying to figure out who to even talk to yeah their support lines are not not very helpful non-existent i don't think there was a support line (laughs) i I mean it was bad you you can request i think everybody gets one free credit report a year or something yeah uh you can you can go to annualcreditreport.com uh look into that I personally, I have all my credit frozen. I did it years ago, and I try to do things with cash. It's a lot easier for me. That's my mm-hmm. preferred method. And then I, I just don't worry worry about shit. I have a card, but I don't use it for anything other than just paying my normal monthly bills that I would be spending cash on. I just do it for the points, but it gets paid off every month. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's not used to spend on anything that I wasn't going to buy anyway. You, uh, you, you, you didn't use it to go to Ireland. No. Oh no, wait, that was, that was that was me. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you only live once. Yeah. <laughs> unless unless you're unless you're Buddhist, then you might live a few times or Hindu. <laughs> you might live a few times. Anyway, <laughs> shouldn't we be Hindu? Because we're we're two balls. <laughs> yes, we should be Hindu. And where's my credit card for my prior life? I, I believe I was a Rockefeller. I'd like my bank account back. Thank you. Oh man, we should start a suit. See if we can get you uh, get you reinstated. <laughs> I'm seeing. I'm 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 regressing into the past life, Kyle. I think my name was Nelson. Nelson, does that that ring a bell? Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I didn't know be. you then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm getting something. Were, were you, I think you were a J. I'm getting a Paul. Getty, does that, does that ring a bell, Kyle? I think that was you. I was Getty Lee. <laughs> He's still alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I am Getty Lee. <laughs> you know uh, who I heard went on a date with Getty Lee? Oh? Yeah. Two bulls in a... China Shop is proudly brought to you by Sue Pullen at Fairway Independent Mortgage. I don't know (laughs) if she ever managed to get on a date with Getty Lee, but he would be lucky because she's a lovely woman. He would be thrilled. And also, she's not only a lovely woman, but an equal housing (laughs) lender, a certified mortgage advisor who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. 
Sue has over 20 years experience helping thousands of homeowners purchase, refinance, even do reverse mortgages. Sue just loves to help. She's licensed in 28 states. So reach out, see what Sue can do for you. Best way to reach her, just give her a call, 520-977-7904. Or you can send her an email, spullen at fairwaymc.com. That's S-P-U-L-L-E-N at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number 2289. Sue Pullen has an MLS number 206048. That email again is spullen at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number, 520-977-7904. And speaking of Canadians that we also love. Yes. Uh, two Bulls in a China Shop is proud to be affiliated with Trade Pro Academy. Trade Pro. Trade Pro Academy is the educational platform that offers institutional trader development programs to new and experienced independent traders, which means you can learn to trade better than the big institutions. Boom. <laughs> They've got a great staff of highly knowledgeable and successful traders, and there's no better place to be found to learn everything you need to know to be a successful trader. Find them online at tradeproacademy.com, or you can just use our affiliate link in the episode description. It's a great way to support the show and improve your own knowledge and skills. And in that Discord, under the discount links, there is a link to save 10% if you do sign up with them. Just don't mm-hmm. tell George. Yes, dude, don't don't tell. We, we don't want to lose that. Mm-mm. Fought hard for that. Kyle, I'm going to try and do this justice, but I, nobody can be as good as Flary on, uh, on letting people know all about Order Flow Labs. Because he's so awesome and amazing, him, Leo, Job, all the fellows over at Order Flow Labs were kind enough to share their toolkit for trading futures on Sierra Charts, Motive Wave, and Ninja Trader uh, with us. And they just have such amazing custom studies for structures, so structure good. and execution. So good. They are so knowledgeable if you haven't listened to our mini series back to the futures with them it is so good on just auction theory in general it's not you don't even have to be trading futures it's just amazing it applies to all markets all markets and their custom studies all play into it very nicely Mm -hmm. uh they're they're constantly tweaking them and testing them and and sharing support for how to use them uh so if you are trading futures check them out orderflowlabs.com just amazing amazing stuff orderflow (laughs) orderflowlabs.com Woo! all right time to talk about some stocks ah yeah let's do that Talk about stock time. Looking for setups and still not advice. Big moves, fresh news, and earnings. All that we're saying is still not advice. Stock time. Please don't sue us. All right. Okay. Should I should I lead us off? Yeah, lead us off. Well, we haven't talked about Amazon in a long time, have we? Amazon the river? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. Is that what it's named after? The Amazon River in South America? What's the connection, I wonder? I, I don't know. It was a book company. Yeah. Maybe it was the Amazon Women from ancient Greece? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, okay, well, uh, speaking of the company, they've agreed to buy iRobot, uh, you know, the makers of those popular Roomba vacuums. Yes. Wait, the company's actually called iRobot? Yeah. Like the Ag- Isaac Asimov book? Yep. <laughs> I did not see anything about the three laws of robotics on their website, but uh, yeah, that is the name of the company. <laughs> the new three laws are all about cl- cleaning floors. Yeah. <laughs> I will not go downstairs. <laughs> I will not smear dog shit all over the room. I will. <laughs> I will always. <laughs> Uh, it's an all cash deal valued at about one point seven billion dollars, including uh, debt. So it has the potential to expand Amazon's robot lineup and deepen its presence in consumer homes. As if they need more. Uh, <laughs> last year, Amazon had introduced a home robot of their own called Astro. It was a thousand dollar, twenty pound dog like robot that zooms from room to room, capturing live video and learning your habits for. I'm sure non nefarious reasons. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not collecting that data for anything. Good lord, do we need to have a Jeff Bezos as a supervillain debate too? Ooh, I think right now it's who's gonna be who's gonna win that supervillain contest. Like who's gonna get there first? Uh, right, it's gonna be the first person to build their base on the moon. <laughs> Some someday, like instead of governments, it'll just be Tesla versus Amazon. Like those will be the two countries. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what you're gonna live in either Amazon shelter or in or Tesla pods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is the second notable billion dollar acquisition from Amazon in as many weeks. 
I just agreed last month to buy primary healthcare provider One Medical, another all cash deal valued at three point nine billion. Wow! So shares of iRobot were up twenty percent pre market on Friday. I didn't see where they finished. I didn't realize iRobot was publicly traded either. I feel like I should have known that. Mm. Uh, ticker is IRBT. IRBT. Oh, that makes sense. Oh wow, that gapped way up. Oh whoa! I. <laughs> I was looking. I was looking at down at fifty. I was like, "Where's the gap?" And then I saw the little dojo. Yeah, because it didn't really move from there. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Interesting is that that seems to be right at the two hundred day moving average. No, look at that. So, what does the actual deal work out to? I wonder. I'm going to go out on limb and say fifty nine and a half dollars. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) Just trying to think if there is a way we could short this or or go long it if there is more room to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't try to trade this. Well, what about uh, Amazon? How how are they doing post split now that they bought iRobot? Ah, uh, they. Oh wow, look at this. Yeah, we drew a level right at. Yeah, we drew this nice level around one forty four too, and it looks like it's respecting that nicely. Nice head and shoulders down there. Ended at the beginning of July. Still got a big earnings gap to fill from uh, at the end of July. Those earnings are not that great either. Uh, yeah, Amazon might be kind of shortable at this point. But I don't know. That gap was gap up was filling a gap down from April. Yeah, what do you do with that? Battle of the gaps. Fill a gap with a gap. <laughs> I, I'm bullish looking at this chart, man. Are you? Yeah. I was looking at the uh, just the last two candles and the the volume, the way it really has been tapering off the last couple of days. It makes me wonder if it's not going to pull back a little bit for the the next push higher. It 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 may it may. I I think. Uh, I want to see 134 half hold. I also want to see it get over that moving average too, right? Well, yeah. 134 half. I'm put that on my chart. Let's watch that. I like that level. All right. Well, what do you got? I uh, I found a nice, neat little story of Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY. Well, that's one of my favorites. Right? You know, in this day and age, a lot of retailers are struggling, and Bed Bath & Beyond is one of them. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they... Are now they just axed one of their private brands that they they started the Wild Sage brand? Okay, it wasn't Bye Bye Baby. No, 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 no. Uh, that would be an actual store. <laughs> uh, this is this is like one of their uh, bedding uh, decor and furniture brands that was like mm. an in-house thing. But part of why they did it is it it seems it's supply chain stuff. Oh, apparently a lot of these private brands for for big retailers like Bed Bath and Beyond, go figure, they're all made in China. So it's uh it's been hard for them to to keep stocked up. Mm-hmm. Looking at their stock chart, it looks like this was really good news. Yes, <laughs> I mean, yes, it does. <laughs> They're having a good week. Um, well, you know, if you're trimming down to your core, you know, what, what people go to Bed Bath & Beyond for, maybe maybe investors are really uh, responding to that. But it's, it. I mean, it opened the week at $5, five and a half dollars. Yeah, it had been, uh, it had been just falling pretty steadily since uh, the last peak uh, back in April. It ended the week at $8. So, I mean, we're talking oh, about a 50% increase this week. Right. Nice rounded bottom. I don't know. This could be this could be signaling some time to get back in to Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, I mean it seemed like the meme stocks all were doing really well today. Oh yeah. Between AMC, uh GME even uh to some extent. Virgin Galactic was doing well until their earnings. <laughs> I think that pretty much reversed theirs. Palantir has been looking strong lately. Really? Yeah. So, okay. So maybe maybe the Bed Bath & Beyond, maybe it's just a meme stock surge. It's either that or it's just that some of these stocks have just been beaten so far down into the dirt that now is the time where like, it's just a good buy. It's finally become attractive again. That's what I was thinking because I read the story on Bed Bath and Beyond. I was like, "Oh, look at the chart!" And I was like, "Whoa!" Like, they just got got to a point where people were like, "It's not getting lower. Let's just start buying." That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, <laughs> and the buying's been strong too. Yeah, even before uh, Friday, like the buying was was really ticking up. Looks like somebody knew something. It must have been Nancy's husband trading for. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that uh, that buyback tax is going to really benefit Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> so, where's the next level of support that this has got to clear to to really be 
excited. I mean, getting over that 750 mark was, was kind of important for me. It was, that was big. I, I see 850 as the next, uh, next one to tackle. Yeah. It closed in on Friday, but it didn't quite get there. Uh, if we can clear, there's, you know, it's, there's, there's a volume note on the, on the volume profile. It can clear there. Then it's got some more room to run. I see 1250 is the next really big hurdle. Good eye. That, uh, that, that, that will be an interesting area. I'm going to draw yeah. one on my chart right there. 12, 1250. Uh, and then see, the last story I had that I want to bring up is it looks like uh, Intel's back in the news again. They have denied that their Meteor Lake has been delayed to 24. They're saying that those chips are still looking to launch in 2023. Oh, okay. So Intel's quarter has not been good. Looking at this article, they unexpectedly lost half a billion dollars due to a PC purchasing slump. Oh, people. And then there's a report from TrendForce about manufacturing delays sparking the rumors that their next big flagship processor was going to be delayed until 24, which would put it as much as a year behind schedule. Uh, Intel, though, is flatly denying those rumors. The spokesperson, Thomas Hannaford, clarified to The Verge that not only are they are untrue, but that Meteor Lake will actually ship, launch, and be available to consumers in 2023. Okay, so, you know, bad news is a lie. It's fake news, kind of. <laughs> Well, this is the Meteor Lake processor is like really big for them because this is going to be their first processor on their seven nanometer architecture. Oh, okay. No, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big deal. Very big deal. So, yeah, this is going to be kind of huge. So they've already begun moving to hybrid chips with their 12th generation Alder Lake. Uh, but uh, the Meteor Lake, I think, is going to be the really big one. I, I'm really curious to see how these these uh, chips perform. Yeah. Because, I mean, even though AMD is on a 5 nanometer architecture, I've always felt like Intel has had the lead in architecture development. Like, they can squeeze out a lot more with uh, the, the less dense technology than AMD ever can. Right. They can do more before they go smaller. Right. Their 11 nanometer chips were comparable to AMD's, you know, 7 and 5 nanometer for the longest time. Wow. Yeah. So, seeing what their their 7 nanometer chips can do is going to be really, really interesting. And that might be what they, gets them to, to stop losing market share to AMD. Uh, and I got to say, looking at their stock chart, this is this is like a fire sale. Like you get Intel at the biggest discount. Oh wow, you are not wrong. Yeah. When was the last time it was this cheap? Twenty seventeen. Jeez. Yeah. So if you want to buy in at Intel at twenty seventeen prices, now is the time. And it's got a nice gap to fill above that it just left uh, from the end of July with their their most recent earnings. To say they they had a, a devilish surprise of uh, a negative fifty eight percent on their earnings. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> yeah, gapped them down five bucks. No big deal. But Intel is one of those companies that's looking to build their own semiconductor processing plants. Like they're they're one of the ones trying to to benefit from that and, and maybe go compete against uh, like tsm yeah so as a long-term play like yeah this might be a really good time to start picking up some intel yeah i like it me too all right you got any other stocks to, to look for oh yeah kyle i got uh, i got one more i got one more posted uh by yellow man thank you yellow man in the discord mm -hmm. we got a uh got a little nice little story about a company called coinbase the headline is amazing <laughs> 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 yes, the headline is Coinbase is in deep shit coins, and so is the SEC. <laughs> so what was uh, what's what's wrong? What are they doing? <laughs> well, whatever it is, Kathy Wood dumped her position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Kathy Wood the benchmark for like the final despair? Yeah, yeah. If Kathy Woods is out, <laughs> you're done. Kathy Woods is out. Start buying. <laughs> <laughs> So there was a report this week that they're they're being investigated by the SEC uh, for selling digital assets that uh, should have been registered as securities. Okay. So and I guess they've had a uh, that that report when it came out, it pushed their stock. Uh, I think it was on the fourth of August. If you look at that candle, it went. It got it. Was, it was as high as one hundred sixteen that day, and it closed at eighty eight ninety. So a little bit of a drop. Ugh. Coinbase has not been doing well. It really hasn't. I guess. I guess the fact that uh, I guess uh, some some guy at Bloomberg places the blame on their their decision some years back to pivot to shitcoins. <laughs> 
which you know, as as we know, refers to digital tokens that have no obvious utility beyond beyond speculative hype, like uh, Dogecoin. Apologies to all Doji lovers. Sounds like all crypto, really. <laughs> I mean, they're all kind of speculative in nature, right? Uh, I guess I guess the uh, the SEC is also got some allegations of insider trading on those. Oh, really? SEC, what are you doing? What are you doing exactly? Well, when, and we'll get more into that in crypto. Uh, but I did want to give a shout out to Yellow Man and uh, and bring that up so we can take a look at how bonkers Coinbase has, has been. I mean, just on July twenty fifth, twenty sixth, they were fifty two, fifty three dollars a share, and in the course of like less than two weeks, they got all the way up to one hundred sixteen. I mean, that's a hundred percent jump, man. Yeah, over a hundred percent. Like this is, I have no idea. Uh, but Kathy Woods is out. At the bottom, I'm, that sounds that sounds like a real retail <laughs> move, there, Kathy. I know she's uh, uh, something's going on with her. She just doesn't seem to be making good decisions lately. Yeah, she needs to to go back to her roots and get her confidence back. I think maybe just take a break. Maybe step away for a little bit. Let somebody else handle things for a month. I'm sure Flary will fill in for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that. I know, right? Anyway, all right. Should we move on and talk about crypto? Now that we're talking about crypto. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got some crypto in my wallet. Hanging out on my Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, I got some crypto in my wallet. Some Doji Sushi Polka Dot NFT. Decentralized, anonymized, fabulous cryptocurrency. All right. Hey, Kyle, do you have uh, you got any crypto stories? I don't. I was excited to hear about yours and I forgot to look. Oh, OK. All right. Well, we'll <laughs> we'll we'll keep talking about the one that's relevant to the Coinbase thing. Yeah, I guess there's a bit of a showdown between the SEC and the CFTC. Uh, we did have the Senate bill finally get introduced, the Digital Commodities and Consumer Protection Act of 2022, mm-hmm. uh, bipartisan bill that's setting up uh, the framework to define crypto as commodities. So if they are legally commodities, then they will be regulated by the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, and not the SEC. Oh, so the SEC is trying to, put, trying to punt the football to somebody else so that way they can continue to short it? We don't have anything to do with them. I think it's the other other way around. I think the SEC is rushing to to get Gensler's rushing uh, to enforce actions before he's not allowed to. Oh, okay, that makes sense too. Right? It's funny. Gensler's rushing to enforce actions on something he still refuses to even try to define. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, <laughs> security <laughs> by default, maybe. Yeah. I guess. And of course, crypto exchanges are much more in favor of the CFTC because it's going to be, they're going to be less restricted. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Or or maybe they just feel like Gensler's out to get him and they don't want him to get him. Gensler must be short. (laughs) Yeah, right. Well, he's very rich. (laughs) He shorted crypto (laughs) this year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people in the, apparently, uh, the crypto community, uh, do prefer commodity. Um, Mm-hmm. And, and along, along, uh, along with that, though, with talking about Gensler and his actions, yeah, single this this blew my mind. Every single crypto exchange in the U.S. is under investigation by the SEC right now. Oh, okay, so maybe that's why they're trying to uh, to push for the CTFC. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I could see why they might prefer somebody yeah. else. <laughs> right? And there's more, and there's like more than forty of them. And they're all at some stage of being investigated. It's, it's just insane. Just insane to me. Right. But, you know, with with things like the Terra demise and Three Arrows Capital going under. and uh, Yeah. Celsius. Yeah, Voyeur Digital. I mean, there's they got a lot of attention lately, let's put it that way. So it'll be fun to watch yeah. how that plays out and uh, see if Gensler can get a few more punches in before the CFTC takes over. <laughs> Before they neuter him. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did have another quick one that uh, I thought was very interesting and, and made, makes me want to uh, become a hacker. Oh, the uh, the 10% bounty? Yeah, Nomad. 
the crypto uh, token bridge got got initially hacked two point three million dollars, and when they got away with that, they went ahead and hacked a, a total of one hundred ninety million dollars uh, out of the company systems. Good old Nomad, the centralized finance project. Wow. And they're playing nice. They're like, look, if you give it back, we'll let you keep 10%. And we won't sick the dogs on you as the leaders promised. Yeah, <laughs> they won't sick the dogs. So what's, what's, the, what's the incentive to not try to hack a crypto place, man? I'm, I'm just saying like, okay, right. you, you pulled it off. Just, just give us 90% back. We'll call it a deal. Well, I mean, how does that work? Like, if you're not even defined, if people don't even know what your asset is and somebody hacks into it, like, who who is supposed to go after you to get the, the money back? Good question. Like, who do you even sick on them? It's such a Wild West scenario. Just any dog? <laughs> any dog you can find. <laughs> Data dog. D-D-O-G. <laughs> Those dachshunds. Pretty fierce. Oh, God. The, the actual fucking hack. Yeah. The breach allowed users to skip the verification messages normally needed to access the platform. Users simply copy and pasted the original hacker's transaction number and replaced it with their own, letting them in on the fun. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> oh, good Lord. I Okay, okay. Maybe we don't even need to hack. Maybe we can just be like old-timey pirates where, where you don't have to actually... Uh, kill anybody you just like sail up with your pirate flag and you're like we could attack you or you could just give us some of your cargo just pretend yeah pretend we're badass hackers <laughs> nah all right we've decided to be to be generous and let you survive yeah we won't take everything we won't take everything just give us five percent just just give us five percent we'll go away we won't hack you i mean there's 40 opportunities apparently we only well, gotta get one of them to say yes <laughs> <laughs> sweet let's do it so anyway, that happened. Uh, it's only going to embolden hackers, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, obviously. Especially, as, I mean, because it's got to be really hard to figure out how to even spend any of the money that you exploit and take from these things, right? Because the whole point of crypto is like all transactions are transparent and stamped and logged on the, the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So they should know where these things went and they should know when they show up again. <laughs> this is at least giving them a chance to be able to keep some of it and actually be able to spend it. Assuming there's not some other, you know, nefarious plot by the, the CEO. Right. Like, oh, maybe he will sick the dogs on him anyway. It's like once they show up to collect the reward, then we arrest them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, well, Kyle. Yeah. I think, I think we, uh, now that we, we're talking about piracy. Oh. Bounties and draw, motherfucker. Oh, no. Uh, and for those of you unfamiliar, this segment, the good, the bad, and the ugly, where Kyle and I shoot at each other. Just uh, trying to trying to go over our, our our trading lessons, what we what we hopefully have learned throughout the week. I didn't get a whole lot done because I was gone for most of the week. Okay, well, how'd you well, how'd you do Friday? I know you traded Friday. Uh Friday was a bit of a mixed bag. I did stick with my levels, but I traded in levels that I wasn't supposed to trade in. Also, mm. so it was one of those scenarios where, like, my first trade was really good. Uh, my next four were trying to catch the top of the the rebound after the NFP report uh, and then i finally worked and caught a beautiful one that made up for everything that i lost trying to catch it to begin with so i ended up green but only because i kept trying to do something that was stupid <laughs> so, <laughs> seems like i haven't learned a whole lot but it is reinforcing i am sticking to my level so i'm feeling happy about that uh, i'm just not doing a very good job of being patient so yeah we had a little bit of discussion about that on the voice channel and that's something that i'm gonna have to reflect on and work on yeah. This weekend before I come back to, to hit it again fresh on Monday. I was trading this week. I was trading this week. Yeah. I sensed I sensed your presence was gone. Actually it was funny. The first day I got on there and was like, Where's Kyle? I'm like, I don't know. And then like as I woke up, I was like, Oh yeah, he's in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I do know where he is. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, I got I got I got on and I was I was trading mostly just the uh the balance. Um, I was yep. the destination trades like, oh, it's at the top of the balance and it's starting to drop. I'm going to short it. It's at the bottom of the balance. It's starting to go up. I'm going to go long. Uh, I ended the week flat because Friday I, I didn't do as hot. Mm -hmm. My, my stops, my entries weren't as good. I didn't, I did I wasn't patient Yeah, is, is what was happening. I just was impatient and I just wanted to like, oh, I got this, um, th Thursday, it was it was it was real choppy right above the balance box. I shouldn't have been making any trades. I made some bad trades. Uh, mm -hmm. As we would be able to like touch the box and 
and it'd be like, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna sink, and it would start to pop out of the box, and then go down, and it just, yeah, choppy above the box. So, you know, I still got some work to do on patients myself. Uh, are you seeing anything like any patterns or things that are, like things that are making you that make the the trade more successful, or do you still need to collect more data to to, to get that? Uh, I definitely feel like uh, I n- always need more data. Always need more data. I've got uh, a. It's not order flow labs because I'm not using CR charts, Ninja Trader, or Motive Wave. But I do have uh, what I, I on the voice channel I refer, refer to it as the discount buy and sell zones. Yeah, the trading view study. Yeah, and it has it has it's it it's pretty nice. Mhm. In in that uh I started doing uh, 5 minute, 15 minute and uh 1 minute. I haven't been looking at the 1 minute as much. But you'll see it print on the 1 minute and the and the 5 minute and the 15 minutes at different times. Mm-hmm. Um and I have been able to use some of those to get some really like like if it's at the top of the of the zone and of the, of the balance area and that that signal starts to fire like oh I, I need to get a short going the cell zone fires and it's at the top of the balance right you need to get a short on because it's going to move a couple dollars uh that's been pretty good interesting um and the the other way to i've been using that is the same same way with like uh some of my bots i was trying with the the order flow labs dominator where it's like oh that cell zone it failed that's right yeah yeah so <laughs> let me let me go long <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point because yeah, those should indicate some stuck traders at those levels. Mm-hmm. If they get run over, they don't hold. Or at the very least, they're not showing up this time. Exactly. All right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so it sounds like you're getting some new data. Yep. Trying trying to do it right. Developing. Not do it wrong. I like it. All right. Should we, uh, should we do a bet? Ooh, I think it's that time. I need it, want to feed it, going to win it if I take it from you. All right, Kyle, so I wasn't here last week. How does this new format work? Basically, we just have to agree on a, uh, on our bet pick, and then we are trying to compete against random. Okay. All right. So, is there anything that you're looking at that you like right now? I want a short HKD. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I think the other option I was looking at was, uh, the more you're talking about Bed Bath & Beyond, the more I was liking that. Oh, I, yeah. I like that one, too. I don't like where it's at right now, though. I don't like trying to pick it up in an area where it had balance before. Like To me, that's not as strong of a, a trade. The HKD looks a lot better. Yeah, if I was going long uh, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, I'd be, I'd be trying to enter under seven. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd be looking for. Uh, I don't know. You want to flip a coin and make it random? No, no random. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> we decide. Don't bring him into this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. Or do we do the opposite of what he says? Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's oh, that devious bastard. That would still be random. He would know. Yes. Oh, God. He's one step ahead of us. I Kind of like HKD. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> let's just short the shit out of that. Do we want to stop on this? Um, I mean, sure. Let's put the stop at a thousand. Well, here's the thing: if because uh, it's trading at five ninety nine right now, if mm-hmm. if it opens at five hundred and spikes to a thousand, we'll be at zero. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? If we are already out of the bet before, <laughs> we've never blown an account up on this. <laughs> we've always had something left over at the end. It's very true. <laughs> Let me flip this onto a five minute chart. And see if maybe there's some more points we can watch for looks like 900 is kind of a key level 540 to 500 seems like another support ah i'm not sure i'm not sure how to play this how would you do it i know i put the stop at 800 but shorten it or we can just go half it open and then another half at 850 if it gets up there there you go yeah let's do that and then a stop at 950 not 925 925 okay all right you writing this down because i didn't oh um no i can't you want to take profit in there? I'd say the first take profit at 425. 
and the second one at two fifty. Fuck if that happens, and we're gonna we're winning this shit. Yeah, we just go all cash for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. We can do bonds. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty-year bond yield. <laughs> Right. All right. Let's see. For random, we've got a New York Stock Exchange and consumer services oh, sector. Okay. And it has given us Global Medical REIT, Inc. GMRE. Who almost GME? Oh, uh, so like they own hospital properties? Interesting. That's what it sounds like, right? Or medical offices, yeah. It's a real estate play. Um, well, just bounced off of that 1220 support or resistance. Uh, looks like that held this week sell volume looks like it's been picking up uh, we might be okay on this one they, on the third they just uh reported a surprise earnings miss by 36 percent, but a revenue beat by five percent so yeah ah take that random ha this is not your month random of course there's always a chance that <laughs> 1150 holds and it goes back up hopefully not all right so there you have it uh kyle and i are shorting uh HKD and random is long GMRE. Take that random to the tool shed. And- <laughs> Beat him like a redheaded stepchild. Oh, oh, Kyle, this has been a great episode. I want to thank you personally yeah. right here in front of everybody. Oh, yeah. for coming back. Coming back. Yeah. I was never going to leave. Aww. I can't stay away. I can't quit I can't you. Quit you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, man. <laughs> Folks, thanks for sticking around. We really, really appreciate everybody showing up. It's such a good time here in the shop, but we do have to close and uh, go away. I know, sad. I'm sad. I'm tearing up over here. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back Tuesday. We'll be back at you soon with some more news, some more interviews. And until then, happy trades. Bye, everybody. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades. With Vanguard Advice, no matter what your retirement goals are, they can help you get there and enjoy it for years to come. The financial journey is all yours, but you never have to take it alone. That's the value of ownership. Visit Vanguard.com and explore Vanguard Advice. All investing is subject to risk. Fund shareholders own the funds that own Vanguard. Services are provided by Vanguard Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Finding the perfect developer isn't easy. But at Upwork, we found her. She's in Prague, between the ideal cup of coffee and a truly impressive synthesizer collection. And you can find her right now on Upwork.com. When the world is your workforce, finding the perfect project manager, designer, developer, or whomever you may need tends to fall right into place. Find top-rated talent who can start today on Upwork.com.